Hi everyone, welcome to VLSA Explore with Raman. Today let's discuss Active State for Management in PC Express. ASPM is a hardware based link power conversion mechanism that only applies while the device in the D0 power state. Hardware based link power conservation means hardware will automatically understand to enter the ASPM states. Why you have to enter the ASPM state to save the power? Whenever device is inside the low power state means it will save the power. Here you can see there have some fields which the software can to control or observe this operation. It is hardware initiated. Software take any action about this one which means there is no instruction from any other component. It can be only enable or disable its using configuration register bits. What will happen inside the DET, any DET, you have a controlled fields for the ASPM. You have to control the fields which is the, which state you want to move, which is L0 state or L1 ASPM state you want to move means you have to be configure it before entering this state. But before configuring this registers, you need to check whether the particular DET having the supported feature or not. Okay. Whenever any DET placed inside the low power state, you can able to achieve power save here. There are two types of the power sets. One is L0 state and L1 ASPM state. L0 state is the state where quick entry and exit latency is. The main way this is done by putting the transmitter into electrical idle condition. Whenever any device is under the electrical idle condition means you can save the power. Actually, in the L0 state transmitter, which is it needs to send the electrical ideal address to the opponent component. Why you have to be send the electrical ideal address? Because opponent component need to send any packet. You don't know whether the particular component is under the low power state or not. If you have to be checking without checking, you are sending the packet means the packet may be lost. That's why our component need to be notified that particular component is under the electrical ideal condition. In the L0 state, it is there is no handshake between the both components. It just to send the electrical ideal address set, then enter the low power state. But for the L1, you need you have to maintain some the handshake mechanism. For the L1 ASPM, there is a longer entry and exit latency. Why you have to be there is a longer latency here? Because they have a handshake mechanism. Both partners need to be understand when it need to be enter the L1 ASPM state. Here for the L0 state, only one component can be entered. But for the L1 ASPM, both components need to be enter the ASPM L1 state. In this state, both transmitter go into the electrical ideal at the same time, which means both components need to be entered the L1 ASPM. For L0 is no need, only one component can be entered the L0 state here. Power management control. Here if you can see this is the control fields. Active state power management control field. These fields can be configured. When you can configure these fields means software can configure. When you can configure means it can be configured when the duty that components can be supported the ASPM fields. Whenever the ASPM field are supported means at that time you have to be configured. Software can configure this value. It is less considered it will configure 0 one means it will only support for the L0S. Uh, if configured 10 means it will only support for the L1 entry. This is read write register. It is a, a root complex in control register. You have to configure before entering the L1 or L0 state here. Entry into the L0 state. When you can enter the L0 state, why you, when actually if you don't have enough packets to transmit, then you can make the device into active state. That is not needed. We can make the device into low power state. How you can make the low power state? By ASPM hardware automatically put the link into low power state. When there is no packets are coming, there is no packets to transmit. At that time, how ASPM hardware will directly put the link into the L0 power, L0 power state here. Here you can see no TLP is pending to transmit over the link or no ST credits are available to transmit any DLPs at that time. ASP hardware will directly put the link into the low power states. 
when you can exit the azure state here if you have a package to transmit at that time hardware asp mo hardware automatically understand to exit the azure state it will need to send the fast training sequence to exit the azure whenever any device is in low power state means it will lock the symbol lock whenever any lock, symbol lock will last means it is not possible to sample the data properly you have to be sample the data properly means you have to send the fast to training sequence order set to achieve the bit lock and the symbol lock then you can sample the data properly l1 aspm l1 aspm is a there is a handshake mechanism made up for the L1 ASPM. It is a longer latency and exit. This state provides a greater power save compared to the L0 state. This field here you can see when supported. ASPM is supported. L1 entry is disabled by default in the ASPM control field. Software must enable ASPM L1 on the downstream component only. What does it mean? It means our duty which is downstream component supported the L1 then you have to be configured the ASPM control field because by default that L1 capability is zero you have to be capable you have to be control the fields by making as setting this control fields downstream components you have to be configured the ASPM control fields before entering the L1 state if the component which is our endpoint is not supported the L1 means no need to configure the ASPM control fails ASPM enter into the L1 state when you can enter the L1 state actually the all the power state low power state to enter because if there is no package to transmit other than you can enter here you can see downstream device to initiate a transition to the l1 state once the link has been ideal in l0 for a set of amount of time what does it mean in the l0 state there is no package to transmit there is no action going on you have to make the link into a low power state at that time this uh, asp hardware will automatically direct to enter the l1 state here three power management messages provide support for the aspm l1 state these are the message these are tlps need to be transmitted before entering the l1 state this these are the handshake mechanism let's our endpoint need to transmit pm active state request l1 dlp this request needs sent from the endpoint then our root complex need to understand whether it will support means it will send the pm request add otherwise it will send the pm act to state nac tlp this message need to be sent if it is not supported okay here downstream port must accept a request to enter l1 if all the following conditions are true the port support aspm l1 entry our endpoint need to support the aspm l1 entry also software need to enable the aspm l1 control fail no tlp is scheduled for transmission there are no tlp to transmit at that time you have to make the link into the low power state here also you have no ac or nac tlp scheduled for transmission then you can play the link into the l1 initiation <laughs> ASPM L1 negotiation rules. What are the rules you have to be follow for before entering the L1 state means endpoint need to do this following things. Ensure enough flow control credit before entering the L1. Why it need enough credit? Because during the handshake mechanism, our root complex, root port, send any packet. Then it need to store that packet. Then after uh, exiting the L1, then it need to send the completion. After that, it need to block the new TLPs from being sent. Our endpoint need to block the what is the newly generated TLPs it need to block. Okay. Complete the transition to L1 first if new TLPs are arriving during the transition negotiation. What will happen? Our endpoint doing the L1 negotiation. At the time, any packets need to be transmitted, but it will first complete the L1. Then after exiting the L1, then it will proceed with respect to the new packet. Otherwise, it need to stop the execution of the L1 negotiation, then to send the packet. That is not occurred. It need to be completed the L1 transition first. Then after the exiting the L1, it need to process the new TLP. 
wait for the last session TLP to acknowledge the before proceeding, which means actually our endpoint send one TLP to the root complex. Then it need to wait the acknowledgement to enter the L1 because it need to understand whether the particular packet reached correctly or not before proceeding further L1. Send the PM to state request L1 DLP repeatedly without proper timing, which means our endpoint need to send the PM to state request L1 DLP to the root port. Then root port will understand it is supported means it will send ACK or NAC based on the implementation. Continuing sending the other necessary DLPs and skip part of set are needed. After sending the PM Act to set request L1 DLP, our endpoint can be sent the DLPs and also skip part of set. But it will not initiate any new DLP. It can initiate the DLPs and skip address set. It will wait for the response from the upstream component. Upstream component means root port before finalizing the L1 entry. Do not send a new TLPs but still accept store incoming ones from the upstream component. It will not initiate a new TLPs but it can accept a new TLPs coming from the root port. After the exiting from the L1, it will send the completion for the respective packet. Upstream component means our root port. There are two possibilities. Our endpoint requested L1 entry by sending the PM request to signal, okay, DLP. Then our endpoint can be accept the request or reject the request. What are the condition to accept the request? How, what is the procedure to further our endpoint need to do? Let's discuss here. Whenever ASPM L1 rejection rules, our which one root port will reject the request. How it will reject the request? The string compound reject the L1 entry request. It must immediately send a PM act to state NAC message to the downstream component. What does it mean? Your hover root port need to send the PM act to state NAC message to the downstream compound. Downstream compound means EP. If the this message need to be sent to our uh, endpoint means what will happen? Endpoint have two options. It can enter the L0 state. Okay. Otherwise, it can be send the Again, request PM act to state request L1 DLP, it need to again send. When it will send means waiting after exiting the 10 microseconds. Then you again initiate the request. Otherwise, the L0 is supported piece are available inside the endpoint means it will directly enter the L0 state here. Okay. It can be whenever the rejection happen means it has two options our endpoint. It can be enter the L0 state or after the 10 microseconds exiting, then it will send the again request. There are two options here. This is a transition, okay? Upstream component means root port, downstream component means our endpoint. This is a TL layer, DL layer, physical layer, blocks, okay? This uh, black box indicates the inactive state. Mm -hmm. Downstream component which is to enter the L1 state. Our endpoint wanted to enter the L1 state. Why it wanted to enter the L1 state? Because it don't have any TLP to transmit. At that time, it will enter the to initiate the L1 state. Downstream component accumulates minimum credits block the scheduling of a new TLPs. It will have enough credits to transmit the data and block the scheduling of the new TLPs. Also, our endpoint need to receive the acknowledgement from the last TLP. What is the TLP last impact? It need to get the acknowledgement. Okay. After that, it will send the PM Act to state request L1 DLP. It will send continuously this uh, uh, this DLP. Here you can see this PM Act to state request L1 DLP is sent repeated continuously. It will send repeatedly. When it will send, it need to receive any message which is any DLP from the our upstream component root port need to send any information to the downstream component then it will stop sending the PM Act to state request L1 DLP. Here you can see our root root port. PM act to state NAC message, reject message send it. Then what it will do? It will enter the L0 state. Here you can see physical error is inactive. Our downstream port. Here our endpoint is in the L0 state. Here the physical error is inactive. If reject message is sent by the our root port. Otherwise, it can be again send the PM act to state request L1 DLP after exiting the 10 microseconds. Okay. Here you can see this black box indicates the inactive state. Physical area is inactive after entering the L0 set. But all the TL and TL are active states here. Only one component is active. Here you can see our upstream component is not entered the L0 set, but downstream component entered the L0 state. For the L0 state, there is no need to mandatory for the both states need to be entered, which is both components no need to enter. Only one of the component can be entered the L0 state. 
rules in case of the acceptance. Asking, let's consider our root port, send the request, which is the PM request act DLP is sent. What will happen before that? It need to block the new TLPs, injure all previous and TLPs are acknowledged. What does it mean? Our upstream component, which is our root port, need to wait, acknowledge the uh, all the TLPs and before that. Okay, it need to wait acknowledgement from the last TLPs and also it will block the new TLP schedule. If after that it will send the PM request act DLP repeatedly. It will send repeatedly when it will send means our downstream component need to enter the electrical idle state. After entering the electrical idle state, then our upstream component, which is our root port, need to be enter the electrical idle state. Here you can see downstream stops its L1 request. Actually, our uh, endpoint send the L1 request to the root port. Root post send a request which is the PM request at a DLP send it. It means it is accepted, which is the L1 entry is accepted. Then after received by the downstream, it stops the L1 request transmission and enter the electrical ideal. Here you can see whenever our root post send the PM request at DLP, then downstream component which is the end point will stop sending the request then it will enter the electrical ideal after detecting it actually our end point enter the electrical ideal our uh, root port will detect upstream detects electrical ideal also enter the electric ideal to complete the l1 transition both which is our uh, end point and the root port both are enter the electrical ideal state here after that it enter the l1 state <laughs> Here you can see downstream component. Downstream component which is to enter the L1 state. Now what will it will do? It need to injure credit. Downstream component accumulates minimum credits, block scheduling of the new TLPs. Also, it will downstream component receive the acknowledgement from the last TLP. This condition you have to be set before sending the PM act to set request L1 DLP need to send from the end of point. Okay. After sending this request, which is the PM act to set request L1, our which one? root port need to be block the TLPs and also wait for the acknowledgement from the last send TLP. Then it will send the PM request act DLP repeatedly. When it will send the PM request act DLP repeatedly, when it will after entering the which one our end point need to be send the electrical ID. Then it will stop sending the PM request act DLPs. Otherwise, it will send continuously. This uh, request act DLPs, it will send continuously. After, uh, before that, it need to send this, uh, our end point need to send, the, enter the electrical ideal after uh, detected, which is our root port is detected the electrical ideal from the end point. Then the end point, our root port also need to enter the electrical ideal. After that, all the TL layer, DL layer, all, all are inactive. You can see both components, which is our housing component is entered the all uh, all ends are inactive. Here you can see the TL layer, DL layer, physical layer are inactive for the downstream component also inactive here. Okay. How you can exit the L1 state? If you have a package to transmit, then hardware which is ASPM hardware automatically detect to exit the L1 by placing the exiting the link, our link there now, link need to be electrical to exit the from electrical ID detected on any LAN configured link. What does it mean? Already our links are in electrical ID. We have to be exit the electrical ID condition by sending the electrical ID exit order set. Okay. Or you can direct it by any other component. You have to be directed. But after how you can after exiting it need to assume the symbol lock by entering the recover after exiting the L1 it need to enter the recovery lock to achieve the symbol lock. Now any component which is L1 can be initiated by either upstream or downstream component exit. But for the L1 initiation, only one component. Which component can be initiated? Downstream component. Our endpoint can be initiated the L1. For exit, both components can be initiated. Exit from the electrical ideal is detected on any lane of the configure line, then L1 exit will happen. Okay. This is the steps here. For L1 negotiation, there is some handshake mechanism, but for L0 state, there is no handshake mechanism. It will directly enter, okay? If there is no TLPs are there, it can be directly enter here. If you like the content, please share and subscribe.